Hi everyone, my name is Rachel de Guzman. I am your Sports on Purpose host. On this blog, we will be spreading awareness on the most valuable life lessons learned and wisdom gained from playing, coaching, and participating in sports by bringing the most fascinating conversations with some of the most inspirational and insightful sports personalities in the country. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Sports on Purpose. Our guest for the for the very first episode of Sports on Purpose running series is an ultramarathoner, a running coach, a father, and a husband. He attended Georgetown University in the United States of America, where he earned his degree in sociology and psychology. He has worked in marketing corporate companies in the Philippines as well. And I'm very proud to say that he is my running coach. Okay, without further delay, I'd like to welcome our guest for this episode, Coach Vince Benuan of The Invincible Running. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Thanks, Coach. Oh. How are you doing? Good evening, wherever we are. <laughs> so, Coach, how, how, how are we doing? <laughs> um, doing okay. Um, you know, 2020 is a bit a uh, difficult year to get excited to train and run um, since even though I coach it's I still like to think I'm still an athlete so having races is a bit motivating so not having races yeah. of course it's a good time to train it's a good time to rest it's a good time to try new things to do, do different things but it's still it's still mentally difficult to train week in, week out, day in, day out. So, voila, let's see. Let's see how this goes. I think, voila, I have good months of training that are just amazing. I'm like, wow, Boston qualifier type training. Wow. And then I have months that I'm just like, I feel like I'm in hibernation. I feel like I feel like this is good. I try to convince myself that not running for two or three weeks is a good idea because your muscles get time to rest. Everything is so easy. It's so nice. And then, but magalo, magalo, because it's it's just a constant battle of um, uh, motivating. Yeah. And but, but, I feel bad for my trainees, my, my, the people I coach, because, uh, you know, if I can't get the ball rolling, it's going to be harder for me to get them going too. So it's, it's good pressure. It's good pressure to uh, hold myself at a standard. Um, to you always keep, do. <laughs> try. Well, thank you. I know. <laughs> well, that's why I post. That's yeah. why I post so frequently, you know, because yeah. it, it's also not just for others, but it's also for myself to kind of capture the, the day, you know, capture yeah. the moment when I look, at, look back at it next year or in years to come. Like, wow, grabe, I was, yeah. I was doing this, I was doing this. Yeah. So, and, and that, really, it's, you know. yeah, you've been a great source of inspiration. <laughs> for many of us, so seriously, you, you've been, well, I can totally relate to what you were saying earlier. It's, it's very different. I, it's, it's very difficult to be, you know, to, to get motivated nowadays because yes, you don't yes. really have, you know, um, like an actual race to <laughs> participate in. It's very difficult mm -hmm. to, to stay mo motivated. All right, coach, I'd like to formally begin our conversation and um, our, our episode for today by um, just saying this quote by Bill Bradley okay sports is a metaphor for overcoming obstacles and achieving against great odds athletes in times of difficulty can be important role models what do you think about that uh, quote coach athletes as role models I think because if you look at the whole scope of things, right? um, we all have roles, we all have different uh, 
I guess, different hats that we wear, you know, different uniforms we wear. And if you want to be an athlete role model, that then you can be the role model in, in reference to sport, in reference to be staying fit, in reference to, you know, uh, just overcoming, diba? But that doesn't necessarily mean you're the, um, you're the idol or, ref or um, to be looked up to in personal life. You know, it, if that were the case, there's going to be very few athletes that we can really aspire to, the right? Because yeah. personal life versus um, what they are able to accomplish on the field, on the track, on the road is going to be completely different. So it's a, it's a responsibility that, you know, uh, people in certain positions have to try to be the best they can be. But in perspective, we have to conceptualize it. Um, it's just like you can admire someone that is unhealthy, mm -hmm. but they're able to paint really well, or they're able to be the best actor on TV, you know, or you can admire someone that is a stay-at-home parent because they're just the best parent out there. And you're going to be envious of how good they are in that realm. So I think since we have different, I guess, uh, roles in our lives you can idolize or you can be a role model in different elements <laughs> i mean no no one's gonna be copying everything i do and no one's i'm not copying anybody in particular okay, wow it's, it's only been i think five eight minutes uh <laughs> but i've already been you know um learning a lot from 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 your perspective, uh, coach. Thanks for providing. No, no, seriously, it's it's. That's why I thought you're the perfect <laughs> guest. Well, <for> this <laughs> vlog. Are aware that I I just keep going. I keep talking. <laughs> so it's okay. I think it's sometimes okay. in our time. and even in the training sessions, I feel like I am talking so much that the hour or hour and a half that I have with you guys. Most 45 minutes can be, just be of talking. But then, in hindsight, you, look, you actually learn more from listening to processing versus what, a 45-minute run. So yes. I, I, I feel like it's a good mix. If you are able to articulate, if you're able to inspire by words, by psychology, by mentality, versus just by phys physical stuff yeah so, because they're, they're all interrelated aren't they yes so for us mm -hmm. to be you know to be more motivated in terms of you know running achieving our goals our mindset has to be has to be right <laughs> yes yeah thanks for that coach okay let's uh i, I just want to know who's your who who is your sports hero it doesn't have to be a runner it could be of course uh, yeah. yes um i I think about this often, you know, um, it's, and I think it's one of the things that makes me, I guess, different in some ways. Um, but I like to follow many sports athletes across different sports because so many athletes overcome, you know, and we can't just cap capture it in running. We can't just say, oh, Kipchoge because he's just the most dominating runner in the last 10 years and potentially of forever um, given the times he's produced, the things he's overcome. So, but in terms of in the running world, especially marathon running, it has to be Kipchoge because he's able to achieve what he's able to achieve and still live a very down-to-earth yeah. lifestyle Absolutely. and the he gives back you know i think a lot of the african runners really give back to their community unlike other um western runners do in terms of they still live very modestly they still yeah. um 
you know, they, they really inspire their city, their community, their, the, nation, the nation, as opposed to many of the Western runners, you know, they, they ins their inspiration is kind of, it's not as um, broad. So, you know, someone like Kachoge, who's able to still produce day in, day out, week, year in, year out, has to be at the top of my list. Uh, in terms of other sports, uh, as well as Dick Beardsley, he uh, came in second in the Boston Marathon in, I think, 1980 or 1981. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he has a very good book out called um, A Duel in the Sun. A Duel in the Sun. Okay, I'm going to um, take note of that. <laughs> and he actually raced against Roberto Salazar, who is the infamous or famous Nike coach now who um, has his own like uh, doping issues that he is sorting out. But anyway, you, you should watch it on YouTube because it's captured the, their last minute, their last second win is very inspiring and just, um, just amazing. And if you read the book, you also see the kind of uh, difficulties Dick Beardsley had to overcome after winning or mm -hmm. after um, that race and you know what what he's been doing since and you know he's really overcome a lot but the fact that he continues to coach he continues to inspire other runners and just some of the other things he's involved in it's just really amazing and he he came to speak in the philippines a few years ago when i was able to go on a run with him uh wow. with, with a group and it's just, he's so easy, so down to earth. And I just, maybe that's something that um, runner, runners have in common. Uh, most runners and most professional athletes that are runners are very relaxed and very down to earth because running is such, is a relaxed activity. You know, it's not super, super stressed. And so. And I think also coach, sorry to interrupt. It's, it's very humbling. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's very humbling. I mean, running. <laughs> well, based on uh, my experiences in the past, like it will, it, you're just as good as your, your training. <laughs> so it, you can't really get away with you know, not training. Yeah. Or, yes, and a little bit of luck. <laughs> yes, yes. A little bit of luck <laughs> and a little bit of everything else. So, yeah, and I think there's something that, you know, it really breaks the person down when you're doing these kinds of races where people have known, been known to die. People have been known to, you know, never run again after certain races. So, yeah, and just, there are just so many other athletes across the different sports that it's never ending. The type of uh, I, people I look up to and the type of people I read about, the type of coaches I like to follow. So, oh, cool. <laughs> That's really cool, coach. <laughs> I, I, I tried, I'll try to stop um, answering the question at a certain point because I'm like, <laughs> no, I, I, I don't like really I'm mind. Losing myself also. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's it, it's great, and thank you for really taking mm -hmm. time and um, really connecting your answers to your previous, I mean, life experiences. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's why we're here because we really yes. want to, yeah, uh, hear your perspective and yeah. Um, why did you start running, Coach? Why, why did you start running, Coach? Um, why did I start running? Um, yeah. Uh, well, I ran in high school. Uh, uh, and I just took, took a long break. I didn't really... I always included it as a, a fitness type thing, but it was mm -hmm. just recreation. I started running, I think, soon after I became a dad. And another dad challenged... <laughs> me and my family to a fun run you know like hey you guys should join this fun run mm -hmm. and um so we did and we kind of had fun and i kind of enjoyed it it kind of got the blood blood going a bit in terms of the competitive nature of it um and then i just started picking it up and then when we decided to move to the philippines that's one of the things that i told my wife that we had to she had to allow me to do which was to train and run a marathon. Because um, I, I think if I didn't have that goal, I would have just continued to, um, you know, not set a physical goal. 
I think I would have just been living my life, gaining weight, you know, <laughs> doing a little bit of push-ups here, a little bit of push-ups here and there. there. Not really challenging myself to anything. And, um, you know, it, it was fun. It was something that I was a little bit better at than some of the other people that uh, I was running with. And so that got me a little bit more motivated, a little bit more excited. Um, and I, I kind of got hooked. You know, I got hooked into running. I got hooked into the competitive nature of it. I got hooked into the training nature of it. And I got hooked to how relaxed running hey, makes me feel. Yes, yes, yes. It's Same so here. Same relaxed. here. And I'd, I'll, I'll just go back to the first part of your, your yes. answer. Um, mm-hmm. I, from I, what I picked up there is that running sort of provides some structure to your to your like let's say life or fitness mm-hmm. is that right yes I, I it's something i didn't realize would happen you know i thought it would be something i could just turn on and off you know like oh i'll just run mm-hmm. once a week i'll just run <laughs> twice a week but then by and by whenever i got stressed whenever i had a bad day whenever Amy. i just want to do something i would just go for a run and it would be a miracle because as soon as I would come home, everything is clearer. Feel, or I would feel be, great, right? Yeah, and I am able to think clearer during the run. Like I'm able to put two and two together. I come up with ideas. I come up with things Same I want to do. With oh, my I friends, can totally relate. <laughs> so it in that way it became addictive because it's like I like to feel. I want to feel that high that excitement that release more often yeah and that's so obviously that's, translated to other areas of your life as you said you can focus more and, yeah yeah and actually <laughs> i'm able to i guess having that confidence level of achieving things that i didn't think i could translates to other parts of my life where i do i, I can do more public speaking Mm. I'm even doing things here. I'm yeah. even doing things like now where I never thought I would be doing just because of running. The confidence wow. I got from running, the admiration I get from some people, like, wow, Grabe, you're so fast. Like, <laughs> Not so fast, but I guess in re- relation, I might be fast or, uh, you know, so. Well, we, it's really opened a lot of doors. Yeah, and we do admi- admire you not because not <laughs> just because you 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 know you you're such a great runner, but also because of what you represent. Well, we're gonna go. We're we're gonna talk about more of that uh, <laughs> later. No, Thank seriously, you. coach. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really. It's it's been a rich experience so far talking uh, with you. Thank you. <laughs> so, what's your what's your favorite uh, type of workout? <laughs> Running board, um, be more specific. Um, I really like intervals. Oh, in I knew it. Of, I, I, I created one, you know, that's my favorite. And I, I think all of my trainees really enjoy, which is, um, it's like the sp- sprint jog, sprint jog type of uh, training. Um, and I really like that one because it, combines different elements and um, I guess it humbles people. Yeah, <laughs> it humbles yes. stronger Me? runners because they're, they're like, oh, oh this, oh, this is easy. This yeah. is easy. I'm like, okay. You know, and I like having drills that are harder than they seem and that they're always challenging every time you do it. Wow. And I think intervals side that because you do need a breather. Right, it's all about performance, and if you're able to get that jog in, in between, and then you know that you're gonna come up with, on a hard set, mm-hmm. you're gonna, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a reward type drill, mm-hmm. where you rest, recover, and then push, and then you push hard because you know you have a rest. It's not just do do hill sprints. It's not just because um, there's no reward. It's just you got to do it. <laughs> but something with intervals allows you that recovery time and then you got to push. So I think that's top list in terms of my favorites. Yeah. I think it's sort uh, of, yeah, I think it sort of reflects life as well. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, we we do work hard, we push hard, but at the same time, we need to also recover. <laughs> and you know, so that well, and it's and it fresh and ready always keeps you. It it keeps you very uncomfortable. Yeah. Deva, it's like yeah, riding a roller coaster. Zone. Yes, yes, yes. I yeah, you're you're getting like oh 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 sprint boom 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 <laughs> and then relax. Yeah. So yeah, that's my favorite drill. I don't do it myself too often. <laughs> I, I, Are you I know sure? I coach it more than I train. Uh, I actually yeah, I might do it from time to time. So, but I think you guys do it harder than I do. <laughs> I used but to I really if, like it. If I were coach, I think I would like it more. Mm-hmm. I, I, since I stopped doing the drills with you guys, I don't have that like, same challenge level. Um, because I don't want you guys to see me failing. <laughs> that makes sense, since you're also yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very understandable. Yeah, because you, know, you, know, you don't want to... Like your students and trainees to see you not hit the ball or not uh, do something and dropping dropping the ball. Yeah. Then they'll be like, oh, you're coach, you can't even do that. And it's like, eh, I'll just yeah, stick to coaching and then you guys stick to, you know, training. And then when it's my own time, I'll do so young. Yeah, that's why you, you, you've been such an incredible role model to us because you, mm-hmm. you know, you, 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 you do what you preach, right? I mean, you also push yes. your, yourself to the limit. And I mean, in ter- I can say that you're like the king of consistency in terms of, <laughs> in terms of running. Okay, I haven't been very consistent lately. Because uh, some, of, because I think that's what issues. some, yeah, some coaches don't, do the drills. Yeah, sadly. Um, or don't work it out. And I, I think the more you do that, the more disconnect you'll have. Yeah. With the difficulty level, how much rest the person needs, the environment, the temperature. So, you know, once in a while, it's good to mix, mix it up yeah, with the also, training. So and much. it's also good that you will have you know, some sort of an idea what your trainees feel when they yeah. perform a certain drill or workout, right? So yes, yes, much for sure. Think, yeah. yeah, see? I'm proud that you're my coach. <laughs> so, what's the best? Yeah, <laughs> I think we, I, that's why we get along very well. Oh. You know? <laughs> you're, one of the be- you're one of the better trainees I have hmm. because you understand the process that this is it's really not supposed to be fun <laughs> um, and I do and yeah I do en- I do enjoy the hard work yeah I, I actually I don't know for some reason I derive happiness and satisfaction some people may, may find this weird but yeah I, I do derive it from from working really hard and pushing my, my my limits so I think that's I think the I uh, mean one good thing we have in common. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And I feel and we're, it's the minority. Really there's not very many people that enjoy hard work. Enjoy not uh, enjoy learning. And you know, I have you know, I coach many trainees and most of them get it, get it, you know, pretty soon after we go change. Um, others don't, and you know that's just where that's why some improve and some don't. So, yeah. so, coach, uh, what's 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 the best part? I'm I'm curious. What's what's the best part of being a running coach? Um, the best part of being a running coach. Uh. I like to get to know my trainees, okay? So I like to try to understand why they're running and what their goals are, okay? So that's, you know, the first phase of excitement. Like, wow, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, you want to lose weight. Oh, you want to um, live a long life. Okay, yeah, you know, those are very broad goals. Yes. But then once they start running, once they start really training once they 
feel it, once they hit their first goal, mm-hmm. my joy from that point is seeing how much higher we can set the bar. So, oh, coach, I just want to learn how to run. I just want to do one kilometer without walking. I just want, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, we, let's do that. Let's do that. And then, boom, next thing you know, they're doing half marathons. Next thing you know, they're wow. doing full marathons. Yeah, incredible. Because it's, it's like uh, adjusting the, their minds, you know, maybe allowing them to trust me, trust what I'm coaching them, trust what I'm seeing in them, and we create a new picture. We, mm-hmm. we create a new goal for them that is almost unrecognizable from where they were when they started. And so that's yes. really my biggest joy is trying to continue to show them that there's so much more they can accomplish. Yes, that's what I was about to say. One of your <laughs> great qualities really as a, as a coach and as a person even is that you make people realize that they can you know, achieve more and they can be you know, so much better. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I felt that when, yeah, when <laughs> we were training <laughs> and we were still joining uh, <clears throat> races. So, Coach, <clears throat> I'm sorry, but uh, let's just talk a bit about your educational I mean, background. So, you, had your, yes, you earned yes. a degree in sociology and uh, psycho- so psychology. So psychology. Does, yes. yes. <laughs> so, does having a psychology background give you an advantage as a running coach or as, as, as a runner and in um in, in what way <clears throat> okay it 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 has a lot of advantages okay so if i were just to look at it as an athlete and as a you know as a coach for elite type runners, okay or uh, athlete runners it helps me understand um what will motivate them okay so it helps me like to see, okay, this person likes to be left alone. Mm. You know, this person likes to take instruction, but doesn't like to be corrected. Diba? So it helps me understand, okay, this person is very, wants to learn, but wants me to run with them. Oh. You know, they want that, they don't want to be left alone. You know, they want to, they want to um, be with a group. Yes. You know, they thrive in that setting. They like to, that social aspect, okay? This person likes to be quiet, likes to, you know, um, doesn't like to be cr- criticized or doesn't want their form to be fixed. So it allows me to have that extra patience, that extra... Uh-huh. Um, you know, that just trying to understand what buttons to push, what, how to get them over the wall. Yeah. The Because we all have walls. Yeah. We all have something that we're not willing to do. Mm-hmm. We all have some things that we're, you know, we're not willing to sacrifice. So in that aspect. And then, but in the other aspect, which I've learned more and more as a coach, people do some there's a lot of mental um issues that people are over trying to overcome whether it's depression whether it's um anxiety whether it's uh something they're running away from you know abuse whether it's uh bullying whether it's not being popular at school not fitting in Peer you know, not being who their parents think they should be. Um, so there's that other aspect of mentoring. There's that other component of trying to help um, people with their personal life. Yeah. Okay, so that's beyond running. But in some ways, since I'm a coach, since I studied psychology, since I studied sociology, I guess have that to really you know, sometimes I'll stop the training altogether mm-hmm. and then we'll just talk about what's going on in their life. Yeah. And, and really, you, you coach the person. I mean, not, 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 
Yeah, not just the yes. athlete. You, you, you. I, I, I yes. feel I that. I try to. That you coach the person because it it, it will help. It will help in the back end too. Yes. You know, in terms of performance, in terms of other things, and some sometimes that's what some people need is to just be able to voice out, yeah. is just to be able to communicate, just to be able to be heard. And so, you know, I provide light service, <laughs> light, light <laughs> aspects to that. Um, but in terms of professional, in terms of, you know, if I find that someone needs more assistance, more help, then I direct them to those people. But in terms of sometimes some, they just need to uh, feel like someone else believes in them. Yeah, I remember this, one's, uh, this one instance when uh, I think that was... I don't know, approximately two months ago. So I got sick and then I received a message from you. And then you asked me, are you okay? Is someone taking care of you? <laughs> so th I, I really felt your, your concern and you know that I don't live with, you know, with my parents anymore. I have my own place. And mm -hmm. you asking that really, it really meant a lot. And yeah, I, I really felt that you cared about me <laughs> so yeah thanks coach <laughs> of course and that's also part of social media because i feel if people are posting i feel i should reach out you know or in terms of you know, i i really try to be friends with my people my trainees my and so that's just an that's just an aspect to that you know i care about each person i care about you know, like, oh, what's going on? And, and there's a lot that I can tell based on what you post in your mm. race time, in your run times. I'm like, <laughs> hey, Rachel, running 40 minute 5K? Dude, there's something wrong with that. <laughs> oh, Rachel, what's going on? Or, oh, so-and-so, why, why are you running so much? <laughs> yeah. There's no race. Well, I, I, did, on, yeah. having hard time I got home. sick, oh, I think. Too much, too much lifting, yeah, so too I, much running. I can tell if you're not running and you're not posting, I know I, and there's something wrong with something her because she's usually running or training. <laughs> Thanks to so, social media. You know, <laughs> yes. So, so Coach, we were, you, I'm you just trying to be responsible that way. Oh, thank you. So Coach, you mentioned about, you know, uh, a bit of a dep uh, about depression and, you know, pressure, peer pressure earlier. Mm -hmm. So when whenever you race, maybe maybe we can go beyond running. What what yeah, sort yeah. of mental tool do you use when you are under pressure? Um, I guess it, it it goes in two different directions. Okay, so some of the thoughts, mental thoughts that go through my head, there are some that are very positive, right? Like, wow, mm -hmm. I gotta do this, you know. Um, for my family, for my kids, for my kids, got to be strong, you know, it's <laughs> such a great day. Look, look, I see so many friends. I want to um, push hard, you know, because hey, if I push hard, maybe that'll inspire someone else, like, to push hard because, you know, they, they're looking at me like I'm looking at other runners. So then there's that positive aspect to it, like, wow, life is good. I got to, I feel good, you know, all the mm -hmm. positives. But then I also have some, like, negative motivators in terms of people who didn't believe in me, uh, running groups that don't, didn't believe in me, uh, me as a coach, or, um, you know, people that 